All right guys, today we're gonna to be putting a radio in my 2001 Honda Civic. My fiance got off work late. I got about 15 minutes till she gets home. I'm hoping that I can get the radio out before she gets here because we gotta leave as soon as she gets here. Uh, but take a look at what's in my car right now. I have this aftermarket radio in here. I'm putting in an Android radio. In all the videos that I've watched, you normally pop up off something around here and then like take some screws out up here and pop off these side panels and pop this out. This is a 2001 and I'm guessing that it's more basic than that because it looks like just this piece pops out and I think it's just clips holding it in. So I'm going to start with that. After that, there should be two screws underneath and then this whole entire center piece should come out. So I'm going to give that a shot really quick. seems to be more complicated than that like there's some screws holding it in or something so i'm gonna look it up just to double check all right i did find another video where someone removed all of this stuff and then this just popped out but there were no screws holding this piece in so i think i can remove just this so i'm gonna keep fighting at it it just seems to be pretty stubborn <laughs> So that did just pop out. I smashed my finger a little bit on there, which kind of sucks. But underneath here, you have two Phillips head screws, one right there, one right there. They're also, I believe, eight millimeter, uh, eight millimeter socket. We'll get those out, but I'm gonna use a small Phillips screwdriver. <laughs> Now that those are out, this whole entire thing should pop out. I'm gonna try to just use this as a handle. Eh, might not be the best idea. There we go. Realistically, what you would wanna do is maybe go in from under here and push back to get this thing out. Either that or use a trim tool around the outside here, but it seemed pretty stuck. I think the best way would be from, from underneath. All right, well, I ran out of time, so I'll get this out the rest of the way tomorrow. All right, so as I was saying, you just squeeze with your thumb on this connector, that connector, pull them all out. There's also the radio connector right here. You can unplug it from there or at the other end of the harness. I'm going to unplug it from here for right now. You also have your, your antenna cable that can unplug right there. And then you have your controls down here that also unplug. You can see this plug in here. And I believe that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug all of those. Alright, so I'm inside now because it's a little cold outside. I'm going to be separating these harnesses and hooking it up to the new harness for the new radio. Alright, so here's the new one. It's a lot more complex. There's a lot of like steering wheel control plugs and things like that that aren't going to be used in here. Um, but we're going to go ahead and actually use these wire nuts for, for just testing purposes. Like, this is terrible as you can see, like this yellow wire already separated from this yellow wire and I have some random wire nut that I found on the floor just from walking this inside. So like do not use wire nuts to install your stereo, um, but I am going to use them just for testing purposes right now. And then we'll go ahead and solder everything. So I'm just gonna undo all these wire nuts and pull these wires apart. Okay, so now we have this. One thing that we're gonna keep in mind is there are two dimmer wires right here. The one with the white stripe on it is the one that we're gonna use. The one without a white stripe is, after doing some research online, this is a negative. Actually, I'm sorry, I have those backwards. So the one with the white stripe on it is the negative dimmer switch for Hondas. This is used to like dim the radio in increments, which isn't used in most aftermarket radios. It, this causes some confusion, but this is, the one without the white stripe that we want to hook up the dimmer switch to. 
So we're just gonna go ahead and start twisting these together. One thing that we're gonna keep in mind is on here there is a parking brake wire. And rather than wiring that to the parking brake, not only, here it is, not only is that complicated and time consuming, we don't really want that functionality anyway, because one of the most annoying things like in my FRS is that Bluetooth can only be switched over if you have the parking brake in it like turned on or if you're not moving. Yeah, actually it's just if you're not moving. I'm not sure how it, it knows that, but that's a thing. And when somebody else wants to hook their phone up to my Bluetooth, we actually have to pull over so that they can do that even though they're riding passenger. Super annoying to me. I'm one who doesn't really text or play with their radio really or anything like that while they're driving, but for passengers to not be able to is really, really annoying. The other thing that I like to do is uh, listen to YouTube podcasts. And obviously I would like to be able to play YouTube videos in order to do that. Not to watch them, but to listen to podcasts while I'm driving. You have your parking brake wire and your chassis ground. You just twist those two together and that will simulate your parking brake up at all times. All right, so that didn't take long. We have everything important twisted together. The only things that aren't twisted together that will be soldered together is a power antenna, which I'm fairly certain isn't used for anything, but there is a wire that this goes to on the Civic side, so I just wanna make sure that it's connected. And the dimmer, um, I'm just short two wire nuts, so I'm just not gonna connect those. But we're gonna go ahead and test the radio now. This is the radio that we're using, this Atoto A6. I think this is like one model up from the base model or something like that. It's supposed to have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and it was really cheap, like 150 bucks. I'm not trying to put anything amazing in the Poop Civic, so we'll go ahead and throw this in and uh, test it out. Okay, so I went ahead and plugged in all the little antennas and everything that comes with this, as well as a little iPhone USB cable to see how it works exactly, just to test it all out. So I'm gonna go ahead and power it on by turning the keys forward. Looks like it turns on immediately, which is so nice. How come it doesn't have to like boot up? That's crazy. Touch screen works. It's like a, a really nice capacitive touch screen. I'm actually pretty surprised. I'm gonna go ahead and test that the radio works. I mean, we got static. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and play some music through this thing, make sure that sound's coming out of each of the speakers. Uh, I'm gonna test the Apple CarPlay, as well as the Wi-Fi and GPS antennas, and uh, just make sure everything checks out on this. I'm not gonna really show it in the video, but just know that I've gone through this radio completely and made sure everything works. All right, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and solder all this now. The head unit does work the way that it's supposed to. I thought that this was supposed to have Apple CarPlay in it, but it does not. Uh, it's actually the cheaper model that has it built in. This one you have to buy a dongle for, which I didn't realize that when I was upgrading to the better model. I would have just bought a completely cheaper head unit if I knew how to buy a dongle anyway, or a more expensive one that had it built in. But Either way, we're just gonna go ahead and, and finish soldering these together. Okay, so here's the completed wiring harness now. I don't have to worry about it falling apart or these wire nuts coming off or anything like that. Now you don't have to know how to solder to know how to, to be able to do this. You can use butt connectors instead. You will need a crimp tool to do that, but that's another way that's acceptable. This way I like the best because it takes up the least amount of space. It looks the most professional. I think it's the most permanent and it's the cheapest as well if you if you already have a soldering iron solder is like this whole thing of solder was 2.99 so like very cheap 
and you do need heat shrink too, but this whole thing is like four bucks at Harbor Freight or something like that. So this is done. Next, we're gonna go ahead and put the radio into this HVAC radio center console thing. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and, and take this thing the rest of the way apart. To get the radio out, we first have to take out the HVAC controls. Uh, to do that, just pull these knobs off. And we'll just gotta wiggle them a little bit and they'll come off. And then flip it over and there's three screws. One, two, three, and pull this out. Once that's out, there's uh, on mine, there's only one screw on each side of the radio holding it in, so I'm gonna take out this screw right here, and then the same screw on the other side. Now the radio will just slide out the front, just like that, and we can uh, put the new radio in. There are some brackets that come with the new radio, so I'm just gonna try sliding it in right now and see how it fits. Let's see if the brackets are needed. I don't think that they are. Now keep in mind, mine does have an aftermarket dash kit in it, which is why it's got these angled parts right here. At least I believe so, unless the factory radio came like that, but I don't think that's the case. But this does need the outer bezel. This will, however, bolt up as is. The radio's in. Uh, there is some space around it, which can partially be filled by this really ugly bezel, but it doesn't look good, so I'm not gonna put it on. Other than that, it's in here perfectly fine. I'm gonna go ahead and put the HVAC controls back in and then we can put this in the car. All right, I put the HVAC controls in. Now, the next thing that we wanna do is mount our GPS antenna and uh, our Wi-Fi antenna. We're gonna do that. I can't. You're supposed to want the GPS antenna right under the top of the dash, and I can't get to it through here. So I'm actually going to take out the speedometer and see if I can see if I can mount something back up in there. I think I'll be able to. Uh, to take it off, there's actually two screws up here. You can see a hole right there. Two Phillips screws in there, and then this panel should pull out. And I think there's a few screws around the speedometer. <laughs> So I got it out. I actually had to use a seal puller, hook it in the back here. You can see where it's lifted up there where I hooked it and yank on it as hard as I possibly could. And I had to do that on both sides. On this side, the clip didn't even come undone. It just ripped off. Like the plastic didn't break, but that clip was so tight that it did not come out of here. It, the plastic ripped off instead. Like I've never had that happen. That's so frustrating so anyway uh now we can go ahead and pull this cluster out and see if we can mount that stuff up top so there's three screws holding this on one right there and then one in each corner down here okay so this is perfect there's a dash pad here you can peel it back a little bit and then we can just mount both of those things up here. One for Wi-Fi and one for the GPS. And that sits right behind the speedometer. That's gonna be perfect right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick those sensors in. All right, so now we're gonna plug everything else in. We're gonna run the USB port into the glove box for now. I'm going to make a custom port for it. 
but for now this is going to be the easiest way to do it and uh, the least time consuming. And I don't have Android Auto right now, I'm not really going to be using the USB port all that much. All right, so here's the finished product. Everything's back in. I know this is a little fingerprinty right now, um, but no big deal. We turn this keys forward, comes on. That's actually, that actually the slowest that's ever come on. But anyway, it uh, does work. And, and let's see if Wi-Fi works. It does say there's Wi-Fi networks available. Okay, so the Wi-Fi is working. Let's see if YouTube will load. It probably won't play anything. It needs some updates. Yeah, play services need to be updated. So, well, anyway, there you have it. Radio's finished. All right, so I'm just uh, finishing off this video to show you that I did get this adapter for Apple CarPlay. I thought that I was going to be able to install a USB and make it look like pretty OEM. Let me let me show you what I had in mind. So I wanted to cut a little hole in this, dremel it out, and like sand it down really good so that it looked OEM and flush mount this USB port in there, glue it into place so that we had a USB port right here. But then what ends up happening is you have to plug this in to use the CarPlay. So then my idea was that I was just going to have this USB port be the one that's sticking out here. The problem is this is the only quick charge port for this radio. This is also the only port that can use this adapter. So if you want to quick charge your phone, you have to unplug this adapter and plug it directly into that port. The other option I guess I could do is install a USB port that's for quick charge and then have this one for Android Auto and just have them completely separate, but I don't really feel like doing that right now, maybe sometime in the future. But for now, I'm actually just gonna leave this be in, and just keep this port in the, in the glove box. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and hook up my phone and show you how this works. Once again, I don't really recommend this radio. It's after using it, it's, it's pretty slow. With this, it's perfectly fine. So if you have CarPlay running on this radio, it, it runs absolutely great. Otherwise, it's a little bit slow. It's kind of tedious to turn on your phone's hotspot all the time to get, you know, Spotify and maps and everything working on there. So I just, I, I recommend this. I'm going to put a link to this in the description. These are pretty cheap. The reviews aren't great, but there aren't really many options and I have zero problems with it. The only thing that I don't like is the seller that I bought it from said that it was 1.5 amps charge rate, but right on here, it says output 800 milliamps. So it's not really going to charge your phone all that much. It might charge it a tiny bit or just keep it at the same percentage while you're using uh, Android Auto or CarPlay. Uh, but let me just go ahead and hook everything up and show you how it works. All right, so the one thing that's nice about this radio is that it does boot up super fast. So I can just go ahead and turn my keys forward and the radio pretty much turns on instantly. That's almost always the case. So that is one thing that's nice about this radio. The parts where it's slow are like YouTube, uh, Google Maps. If you connect to Wi-Fi and load up Spotify, that stuff's all kind of slow. The, the phone app is pretty quick. The radio is pretty quick, which is, you know, what most people use anyway. But it does come with this AutoKit app installed, which is what you need for the dongle to work for Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Some of the reviews said that it didn't have it on there, but mine came with it installed. So if I go ahead and hook up my phone. I do have an iPhone, so it's going to pull up CarPlay just so I can show you how fast it, it does it. So this is not plugged in right now. If I just go ahead and click this into place, it is connected now. This is going to automatically load up the app and automatically load up Apple CarPlay. Okay. I guess it didn't automatically load it up. This is the only time it's ever not worked for me. Let me try unplugging it and plugging it back in again. Otherwise, I guess we'll just have to manually go in and... Is it not connected here? Oh, it's connecting now. Okay, so now we're in Apple CarPlay. 
We got Google Maps up here on the side, Spotify and phone. If we click this, you can go to your phone calls, click Spotify, you can go to your music. I'm not gonna show you Google Maps because I don't wanna show you where I'm at. But everything runs pretty smoothly. Um, let's see, we'll just hit play. So that's cool. And it will automatically continue playing if you disconnect your phone and reconnect it. Okay, so it's disconnected, goes back to the main screen, plug it back in, it should automatically reconnect. It might take a minute. Okay, so it's automatically connecting. And it automatically starts playing your music again. So anyway, that's how it normally works. And then you can still go back into the other parts of the radio by hitting the home button. If you want to go back into CarPlay, you just hit auto kit and it pulls you right back in. But I mean, that's, that's really my whole review. And just to see, you can still close the glove box. I have the dongle in there plugged in with my cable plugged into it. That's pretty much it. Well, that's how to install a radio in a 2001 to 5 Honda Civic. It's going to be different for different center consoles. Um, but other, other than that, it's pretty much the same process. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you like the video, go ahead and share it. Give it a thumbs up. Feel free to comment. Uh, shoot me any questions to my DMs on Instagram, which is going to be in the description below. And then also I'm going to put a link in the description to this radio that I don't recommend, but I'll put it in there anyway. And then the CarPlay adapter slash Android Auto adapter. All right, well, thank you guys so much for watching and peace out.